In this video, we are going to learn about exponents. So let us see what exponents are. Now exponents are used to represent repeated multiplication. That is, we use exponents to represent repeated multiplication in a shorter way. For example, suppose we have the number 3 and let us multiply it by itself a total of 5 times. Now if we have a look at this expression over here, we can see that it is quite long. Now we can use exponents to write this in a shorter way. And we will write it like this. Now we read this as 3 to the 5th power or 3 to the power of 5. And what this represents is that the number 3 is multiplied by itself a total of five times. We can write this multiplication in a shorter way like this and we read that as three to the fifth power or three to the power of five. So if we multiply three by itself a total of five times then we write it as three the power of 5. And here we call this number over here the base and we call this number over here the exponent. And 3 to the power of 5 this entire expression is called an exponential expression. Now, two common exponents are 2 and 3, and so we give them special names. Suppose we have a number n, and we raise that to the power of 2. Then we say that this is n squared. We read this as n squared. For example, if we have the number 4 to the power of 2, we will read this as 4 squared. Now, if we have n raised to the power of 3, we call that n cubed. That is, if we have a number, say, 7 to the power of 3, we call that 7 cubed. Next, let us consider the sign of an exponential expression. Suppose we have a positive number and we raise that to the power of n, where n is any non-zero integer. Then this will always be positive. For example, let us consider 4 to the power of 3. 4 is a positive number. And this is equal to 4 times 4 times 4, which is equal to 64, and that is positive. Next, let us consider a negative number raised to the power of an even integer. In this case, what we will get is a positive number. For example, suppose we consider negative 5 to the power 2. Then negative 5 is a negative number and 2 is even. And this will be equal to negative 5 times negative 5 and that is equal to 25 and this is positive. Next let us consider a negative number raised to the power of an odd integer. In this case the result will be negative. For example, let us consider negative 5 to the power of 3. Here, negative 5 is a negative number and 3 is an odd number. And this is equal to negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5. And this is equal to negative 125. And that is a negative number. Now, it is important to remember the difference between negative a to the power of n and negative a whole to the power of n. 
Now, this first one represents the negative of a to the power of n, which means we have the negative of a multiplied by itself a total of n times. So that means that over here, we have a total of n factors of a. However, in the next one, we have negative a whole to the power of n. That means we multiply negative a by itself a total of n times. So over here, we have a total of n factors of negative a. So in the first one, the base is a. So we end up having a bunch of factors of a. And in the second one, the base is negative a. So we have n factors of negative a. Let us consider the zero exponent. Now, any non-zero number raised to the power of zero is one. So if we consider a number a, which is not equal to zero, then a to the power zero will be equal to one. So suppose we take the non-zero number five. If we raise that to the power zero, we will get one. If we take negative 37 and raise that to the power 0, we will get 1. If we consider a non-zero number 7 by 10 and raise that to the power 0, we will get 1. If we consider the number pi and raise that to the power 0, we will get 1. And if we consider some huge number, 1, 4, 5, 6, 3, 2, 8, and we raise this to the power 0, we will still get 1. So no matter what non-zero number we take, if we raise it to the power zero, then we will get one. If you want to know why, then make sure to check out my video about the laws of exponents. There is a link to that video in the description box. Make sure to check that out. Next, let us consider negative exponents. So let us consider any natural number n and any non-zero number a. Then a to the power negative n has the negative exponent negative n. And this is defined as being equal to 1 divided by a to the power n. Now, in this definition, we need a to be non-zero. This is because if we consider a to be zero, then we will have something like this. 0 to the power negative n is 1 divided by 0 to the power n. And 0 to the power n will be 0. And so we end up with 1 by 0, but division by 0 is not defined. This is undefined, and so we do not end up with a real number. Because of that, a cannot be 0. It has to be non-zero. So let us consider a few examples to understand this concept of negative exponents. Let us consider 4 to the power of negative 2. This will be equal to 1 divided by 4 to the power of 2. And 4 to the power of 2 is 4 multiplied by itself 2 times. So we have 1 divided by 4 times 4. And that is equal to 1 divided by 16. Let us consider another example. Let us consider 1 by 3 raised to the power of negative 1. Then this will be 1 divided by 1 by 3 raised to the power of 1. So we end up with 1 divided by 1 by 3 multiplied by itself 1 time. So that's just 1 by 3. So 1 divided by 1 by 3, that is equal to 3. Let us consider another example. Let us consider negative 2 raised to the power of negative 3. And this is 1 divided by negative 2 to the power of 3. And this will be equal to 1 divided by negative 2 multiplied by itself 3 times. So we end up with 1 divided by negative 8. And this is just negative 1 divided by 8. 
Now, from these examples, we can see that negative exponents don't mean that we end up with a negative result. For example, here we have 4 to the power of negative 2. So the exponent is negative 2, which is a negative number. However, our result is 1 divided by 16, and that is a positive number. Similarly, in the second problem, we have 1 by 3 to the power of negative 1, which means that the exponent is negative 1, which is a negative number. However, our final result is 3, which is not negative. However, it is possible to get a negative result. For example, over here we have negative 2 raised to the power of negative 3, and our final answer is negative 1 by 8. So that's negative. So a negative exponent can result in a positive number, or we might get a negative number. But a negative exponent will not guarantee that the result is negative. Now, let us have a look at a few practice problems. Let us try to evaluate a few exponential expressions. So the first one we have over here is 7 raised to the power of 4. So that means we must multiply 7 by itself 4 times. So we have 7 times 7 times 7 times 7, and that is equal to 2,401. Next, we have negative half raised to the power of 2. That is negative half squared. Now, this will just be negative half multiplied by itself a total of 2 times. So we have negative half times negative half, and that is equal to 1 divided by 4. Now the next one we have is 0 to the power of 5. So we need to multiply 0 by itself a total of 5 times. So we have 0 times 0 times 0 times 0 times 0, and that is just going to be equal to 0. Next we have 10 raised to the power of negative 3. Now using the definition of negative exponents, this will just be equal to 1 divided by 10 raised to the power of 3. So we have 1 divided by 10 multiplied by itself a total of 3 times. And so we end up with 1 divided by 1000. If we have a look at the next problem, we have 0 0.3 raised to the power of 5. So we multiply 0 0.3 by itself a total of five times. And if we evaluate this, we will end up with 0 0.00243. Now the next one is negative 3 squared. That is the negative of 3 raised to the power of 2. So this is the negative of 3 multiplied by itself two times, so we just end up with negative nine. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time.